The investigation into the brutal murders of University of Idaho students Zayna, Kaylee, Madison and Ethan is now in its seventh week, with the killer or killers still at large. Every individual connected to the case so far, from two surviving roommates to a victim's former boyfriend, has been publicly ruled out by police, leaving an echo chamber with no names to fill it. Details about the murders that shook the small college town of Moscow, Idaho remain scant. The murder weapon is nowhere to be found, and there are huge gaps in the timeline of the last known movements of two of the victims. Investigators have admitted that they are stumped by the killings in the small, notoriously safe college town and still have no suspects or persons of interest on their radar. For weeks, officials have given little in the way of updates on the case, the silence and absence of information only serving to trigger an avalanche of online rumours and conspiracy theories among internet sleuths. While police won't say what they do know, they have resorted to debunking some of these online theories that they know to be incorrect. But with each piece of information revealed or each theory debunked, dozens more questions emerge about the case. Here we take a deep dive into the mountain of unsolved questions and the scant details we do know. The nature of the murders. What we know. The attack was targeted, local police have said. Early on in the investigation, it was described as a, quote, crime of passion by the Moscow mayor, and as, quote, personal by police chief James Fry. Police have since distanced themselves from those characterizations, only revealing that they're operating on the belief that they don't believe the circumstances leading to the attack were random. A few weeks into the investigation, Kaylee's father, Steve, said that officials had given, quote, vague information about the case and whether or not it was just one student who was the target in the murders. What we don't know. Moscow police have refused to provide more details as to why they think the murders were targeted. Officials are also staying silent around whether all of the four victims were intended targets or whether the killer targeted one victim with the rest simply in the wrong place at the wrong time. You're going to have to trust us on that at this point because we are not going to release why we think that, Captain Roger Lanier said during a press conference on November the 23rd in response to why officials believe the killings were targeted. Aaron Snell with Idaho State Police told Fox News Digital that information about the targeted murders is being handled with caution so as not to jeopardise the investigation. He said, quote, And so, if we just provide information to the public, I just don't think that's going to be a wise choice. Although behavioural analysts are working on a profile, it will only be used to refine the investigation and will not be released to the public because it could, quote, potentially put more fear, more suspicion on a wide variety of people, he said. Officials have defended their work on the investigation thus far, telling the community it took time to process the sprawling crime scene. We understand you want answers. We want answers too. But these take time, State Police Colonel Kedrick Willis said. When asked if any law enforcement officials had shared that Kaylee was the target of the attack, her sister Olivia told CNN, quote, they won't confirm who that was to us. On November the 29th, the local prosecutor walked back the claim that the killings were targeted, admitting it, quote, perhaps isn't the best word to use to describe the brutal murders. It seems like the word targeted has different understandings for different people who are listening and perhaps isn't the best word to use, Prosecutor Bill Thompson told News Nation. The bottom line is whoever is responsible for this is still at large. That can't be changed. In yet another apparent walk back hours later, the Moscow Police Department issued a statement saying investigators, quote, do not currently know if the attacks were targeted and accused Mr. Later of, quote, miscommunication. The murder weapon. What we know. County Coroner Kathy Mabbott revealed that each victim was stabbed multiple times with a large knife, describing their wounds as, quote, pretty extensive and revealing that they bled out inside their student's home. I've been a coroner for 16 years. We have had multiple victim murders in the past, but nothing, nothing like this, she said. 
Police have now revealed that they believe the murder weapon was a fixed blade knife and confirmed that they had visited local stores to inquire about any recent purchases. A local store owner previously said that officials had been especially interested in sales of a military-style K-Bar knife. What we don't know, no murder weapon has been found. The messy crime scene. What we know. Describing the crime scene to today, Coroner Mus Mabbott said there was quite a bit of blood. DNA has been recovered from the home which Mogan and Zayna shared with at least two other roommates. Those roommates were at home at the time of the killings, but apparently were unaware of the murders until hours later. Nearly three weeks after the killings, police revealed a sixth person may have lived at the home. Police have taken more than 4,000 pictures of the residents after the murders. The door appeared to be unlocked with no sign of forced entry and nothing seemed to have been taken, investigators said. The bodies were found in the victims' beds on the second and third floors, leading authorities to believe they were asleep when killed. At a vigil on the 30th of November, Kaylee's father revealed that his daughter and Mogan were in the same bed when they were killed. Kaylee's parents had previously said that they had been told by the authorities that the investigation is moving slowly because the killer left behind a mess of evidence. Kaylee's parents said they've heard from police that the crime scene is sprawling and chaotic. They're telling us that there's so much evidence that it's going to take a lot of time to process it all, Kaylee's father told Fox News. This wasn't like a pinpoint crime. This person was sloppy. In an interview nearly four weeks into the case, Kaylee's father revealed that the victim suffered big open gouges rather than simple stab wounds. A neighbour told Fox that the victims often hosted gatherings at the home and had a lot of people coming in and out of the residence, which could potentially complicate crime scene analysis. What we don't know. It is not clear if the killer left their DNA at the crime scene. With officials believing the attack was targeted, it is possible that the perpetrator could have visited the home before that night. On the 29th of November, County Prosecutor Bill Thompson appeared to cast doubt on the belief that all four victims were found in their beds. In an interview with News Nation, he refused to confirm the exact location where the victims' bodies were found inside the student home, saying such information might only be known by the killer. As for the victims who are deceased, I can't say for sure where they were found, and that would be one of the details that investigators would want to protect, as very few people would know the exact locations of the victims in the house, he said. Mr Thompson also said he didn't know if the victims' bedroom doors were left locked. Police have revealed that two of the victims were found on the second floor and the other two on the third floor, but have not confirmed who was where. Speaking to Fox News Digital on the 30th of November, Idaho State Police Communications Director Aaron Snell revealed investigators were wrapping up their search of the crime scene despite the lack of progress. The Killer. What we know. Each individual so far linked to the murder investigation has now been ruled out as a potential suspect. Moscow police have said that the two surviving housemates who were in the home at the time of the killings and the other friends who were in the home when the 911 call was made are not considered suspects. A man who was caught on camera with Madison and Kaylee at a food truck in the downtown area before they headed home and the private party who then gave the pair a ride home from the truck have also been ruled out. Kaylee's former long-term boyfriend, with whom she shares a pet dog, Murphy, is also not being considered a suspect. In a twist on the 6th of November, however, Moscow Police Chief James Fry told Fox News that, quote, cleared suspects could be re-interviewed. What we don't know. Six weeks on from the murders, the killer or killers remains at large, with police admitting that they still don't have any suspects on their radar, with not a single arrest yet made in the case. Officials are exploring the possibility that there is more than one perpetrator, but have given no further update on whether the investigation is leading them to or from that theory. The lack of substantial information from police has led to rampant speculation by experts unaffiliated with the case, as well as internet sleuths confusing the true facts about the investigation. 
The motive, what we know. The murderer targeted at least one of the victims, police said. What we don't know. It is not known if the killer personally knew one or more of the victims and whether the attack was carried out in a fit of jealousy or rage. The autopsies revealed that the bodies did not show signs of sexual assault. The 911 call, what we know. The 911 call was made at 11.58am on the 13th of November and originated from the phone of one of the two roommates who survived the attack. A dispatcher was told there was, quote, an unconscious individual. Authorities have since revealed that the other friends were present in the house when the 911 call was made after they were summoned by the roommates. The surviving roommate summoned friends to the residence because they believed one of the second floor victims had passed out and was not waking up, a statement by Moscow PD read. Multiple people talked with the 911 dispatcher before a Moscow police officer arrived at the location. Officers entered the residence and found the four victims on the second and third floors. What we don't know. Police have refused to reveal who made the 911 call and will not release the audio. When pressed on why the call could not be released, the department said, quote, The contents are exempt from public disclosure because the records are active investigatory records, which, if released, would interfere with enforcement proceedings, end quote. It is unclear what the roommates and other friends discussed in the call and what led them to describe a victim as merely unconscious. It is also unclear what the roommates and friends saw inside the home before placing the 911 call. The Timeline – What We Know Despite more details becoming available in the two weeks since the murders took place, key pieces of what happened in the early morning hours of the 13th of November remain missing. Police have revealed the victim's last steps, yet the timeline becomes blurry as the second part of the night of the murders progresses. On the night of the 12th of November, Kaylee and Mogan spent around three hours at the corner club at the northern edge of Main Street. The pair walked straight down Main Street to a red brick building that used to host the now defunct Garden Lounge. A favourite food truck, Grub Wandering Kitchen, fondly called Grub Truck by its many local fans, often parks outside on Main Street. Kaylee and Mogan ordered, laughed and chatted with friends as they got their pasta carbonara according to police, and they got a lift home from a private party and returned to King Road around 1.56am. Zayna and Ethan returned to King Road at around 1.45am. The young couple had gone to a party across the road at Sigma Chi. The other two roommates at King Road, who have still not been named by authorities, had gotten home first around 1am and fallen asleep, according to police. Mogan and Kaylee both made multiple calls to the same number around an hour after they got home. Kaylee's sister said the unanswered calls were placed to her ex-boyfriend, who dated her sister for years before they amicably split, still sharing a dog named Murphy. He has been ruled out as a suspect. Authorities believe a killer or killers fatally stabbed Ethan, Zayna, Kaylee and Mogan between 3 and 4am. Their bodies weren't found until nearly nine hours later, around noon on the 13th of November. What we don't know. Zayna and Ethan's movements on the night of the murders are unclear. Police said the young couple were at the Sigma Chi party from around 8 to 9pm. It is unclear where they were between 9pm and 1.45am. The area would have been busy at that time, surrounded by other student accommodations, as other young people headed home too. Aside from the calls made by Kaylee, what happened when the four returned home also remains a mystery. It is not known if the killer had entered the house before the victims arrived home and hid before striking in their sleep, or whether he entered the house after the students returned. It's also unclear when and how the suspect fled the home, or if he has already left Moscow. The white car seen near the crime scene. What we know. On the 7th of December, police announced they are looking for the owner and occupants of a white Hyundai Elantra that was spotted near the crime scene in the early morning hours on the day of the murders. It marked perhaps the most substantial update in more than three weeks since the investigation started. 
Detectives did not reveal whether the owner of the white 2011 to 2013 Hyundai Elantra is believed to be a suspect, but said that, quote, the occupant or occupants of the vehicle may have critical information to share regarding this case. The license plate is unknown. The car was in the immediate area of the rental home on King Road in the early hours of November the 13th. The murders are thought to have taken place between 3 and 4 a.m. If you know of or own a vehicle matching this description, or know of anyone who may have been driving this vehicle on the days preceding or the day of the murders, please forward that information to the tip line, the department said in a statement. Another potential but unverified development around the vehicle came days later, with reports that a white car was seen speeding past a gas station at 3.45am on the night of the killings. Police have not commented on the video taken by a surveillance camera at the station about a four minute drive from the student rental home. What we don't know. The identities of the owner of the Hyundai Elantra and its occupants remain unclear days after the police announced their interest. The connection those individuals may have had to the case is also a complete mystery. Claims Kaylee had a stalker. What we know. Moscow Police Department said they had found out through interviews that Kaylee had complained of a stalker. What we don't know. Despite looking extensively into concerns raised by people who knew Kaylee that she had complained about a stalker, police were unable to confirm those reports, the department has said. We obtained information through some of our interviews that Kaylee had made some comments about having a stalker, so that's where that came from, Captain Lanier said. So far, we have not been able to corroborate that, but we are not done looking at that piece of information. Areas of Interest what we know. Investigators are currently seeking surveillance footage from two areas of interest around the city of Moscow as they hunt for the knife-wielding assailant. Businesses and homes within the geographical area are being asked to share all outside surveillance video taken between 3 and 6 a.m. on the 13th of November whether there appears to be motion and content or not. The areas include West Taylor Avenue North Boundary, West Palouse River South Boundary, Highway 95 South to 2700 block of Highway 95 South East Boundary, and Arboretum and Botanical Garden West Boundary. Investigators have determined the two areas of interest within the city and have provided maps which are on our Facebook page and on our website, Captain Lanier said on Sunday. What we don't know. Police have not revealed why they are honing in on those particular areas of the city. The highway and arboretum are around the route that Zayna and Ethan are likely to have taken to get from Sigma Chi to the off-campus home. Safety concerns in Moscow. What we know. Backtracking from previous comments, Moscow police have confirmed that there is still a threat as the killer remains at large. Asked at a press conference days after the killings how he could be sure there was no danger, Chief Fry said, quote, That's kind of unknown. We still believe it's a targeted attack, but the reality is there's still a person out there who committed horrible, horrible crimes. Joseph Galconi, a 20-year NYPD veteran and professor at John Jay College of Criminal Justice, told Fox that the ordeal was one of several missteps in the investigation. Quote, They don't have an identified suspect and they still don't have a motive. So until you have those two extremely vital pieces, you can't set the public's mind at ease. What we don't know. Authorities have not revealed whether they believe the perpetrator has left Moscow already. On the 22nd of December, Moscow police chief James Fry declined to answer a question about whether the culprit was still in the area. 